Hello, hello. Welcome to day 18 of Codetober. And turns out that I just did a beautiful live stream on AnyPoint Datagraph. So I wanted to kind of bring everything that I did together in a summary to create a video about it. I do not want to go through the whole thing in a Codetober video because it took me like an hour and 10 minutes to do the whole lab um, on the live stream. So I don't want to take that much of your time. But I did want to kind of create the summary of what is Datagraph um, and why it's nice. Because I, I didn't know about it um, like two hours ago. I just learned about it in the live stream that I just did. Um, I can also put the link um, to the whole live stream in the description of the video so you can kind of go and check it out on your own. So you can see like the whole process that I did and how I followed the whole lab um, there. But for this video, I'm kind of just going to do a summary and show you how Datagraph looks like and why it's so neat. Um, so first of all, here I have uh, mulesoft-labs.dev, which is a website that was created by engineers or CS or something like that. Um, I don't think that it's regularly updated, so just so you know, but the information that is here is very nice. This is where I found the Datagraph one. So let's search for Datagraph. And here we have the Handsome Lab. I will put the link to all, all of these things here. And as you can see, I already did all of it. I am at step 10, but I can kind of give you an overview of everything that I did. So first of all, we set up Exchange. Here they provide the orders API, shipment API, and sales API for you to just download the SIP and put it right in exchange. So here are all the steps. As you can see here, you just put the SIP file that you just downloaded right there. So if I go to my AnyPoint platform, I'm just going to show you where it is and how it kind of look li looks like. This is a REST API, by the way, here. So you can see here, REST API. These three uh, sales, shipment, and orders are the ones that I created. And they're just regular REST APIs with uh, an API specification and like all the documentation on how to use it um, just as you would any kind of REST API in Exchange. So now um, after we did all that, we set up API Manager. So again, if I go here to API Manager, you will see that we took uh, the information of the um, auto discovery ID and we set up the API and setting up, um, oh, we just set up the API and got the auto discovery ID. So now here, if I show you my API manager, I have the three APIs here. If I go into one of them, there's nothing different about it. It's a regular API. Um, and this is a RAML open API spec. And the only thing that we did that I'm going to show you in a bit is uh, put the consumer endpoint here. But uh, part of that, apart from that, I just took the auto discovery ID in order to be able to put it in Runtime Manager. So let me open Runtime Manager and let me show you now the deployment steps. You basically just go, first you extract the client ID and client secret so you can use this in your properties. Then you have to download the, the jar files of the three APIs that you will upload in Runtime Manager, which are the actual REST APIs that will be running, right? So that's it. You just have to upload the jar files and add these properties, the API auto discovery ID, the client ID, client secret, and the app client ID, client secret. So if I go, oops, <laughs> if I go here, I have my three APIs running in Cloud Hub. Notice that this has to be Cloud Hub 1. And I, I tried to do it in Cloud Hub 2.0, but I wasn't able to. So this I, at least these three APIs have to be in Cloud Hub 1. So if I go to one of them, just a regular API, the only thing that's different is that we had the properties here. So the R discovery ID, the, the client ID, the 
any point platform client ID, any point platform client secret, which you get from uh, the other thing, the environment and stuff. And this just a random client secret and client ID. And here is where you get this URL. So once you get this URL, you will go back to API manager as it says here. And then you will update the consumer endpoint, adding HTTP at the beginning and adding slash API at the end. So you end up, let's check another one with, for example, this HTTP. And then this is a whole um, URL that you have from Cloud Hub and then slash API. So now that that's done, that's what took me like 40 minutes straight. Then you start doing the data graph setup. So first of all, you create the order ID, order API um, unified scheme. Here are all the steps. You just have to select the API from here, from Exchange. Um, then just make sure that everything looks good. The, the, the versions um, that the, the consumer endpoint looks good. Um, we will not be adding any authentication, but you can add one if you want to. Here's how it will look like. And you can edit the schema. What we did here was to make sure that all of the nested types were visible. And also that the type, the level one type was set to enable con collaboration because otherwise you will not be able to let anyone else query this kind of type, this type. <laughs> um, and that's it. You, did, you do the same for the shipment API, but then for the sales API, in this demo specifically, there is one conflict that there are two types with the same name, which is order ID, uh, sorry, order type. So you merge the types to end up with a, a mix of the, the, all of the fields from the two types, the type from the order API and the type from the sales API to end up with just one type that had all of the fields from both um, APIs. So after you do that, you can also link, where is it? Here, you can link other kinds of types into the existing types in your unified schema. For example, here we had the shipment type and we linked it to the shipment type from the shipment API. That's all we did. And finally, we learned how to run the query. So I'm gonna go ahead and run these queries so you can see kind of how this looks like. So I showed you Exchange, I showed you Runtime Manager, and I showed you API Manager. So now if I go here to Data Graph, this is where I already have all my stuff. Um, here's the overview. And also something that you can notice, which is super neat, is that there is a Data Graph, whoops, there is a Data Graph Quick Start Guide right here at the bottom. There's a Data Graph tutorial there even is a data graph fundamentals concept. You cannot see it because there's my face. But <laughs> if you click on it, it will show you like videos of what to do here. And you can like right here from any point platform, you can go through all of these videos and learn what you're doing and like see animations and stuff. I thought this was super nice. And there's also a link to learn more in the documentation in case you just want to go directly to the documentation instead of going through the videos. This is so neat. And also there's this other question mark here at the top that you cannot see because there's a spider here that if you click on it, you will get a quick start of what is data graph and also like some help that you can go through to understand how to use the product, which I thought was amazing because I had never seen this before. Maybe. Maybe it is there for other products, but I had never, ever seen this before. So this is so beautiful. Anyway, we have here the unified schema. If you're familiar with GraphQL, this will kind of make sense for you. If you're not familiar with GraphQL, GraphQL like I was, maybe um, it will not look as familiar to you as it is for other people that already know what they're doing. But anyway, here we have operation type, query, we have the level one types, order, and shipments. Um, and we have all of the nested types that we had to make visible in order for anyone to check them out. We can also see the list of APIs that were added. 
So we have the orders API, sales API, and shipments API. And these are connecting to the APIs that we already had in Exchange and Runtime Manager. So this is awesome. Well, Exchange, Runtime Manager, and API Manager, because in API Manager, you can also set up um, policies and other kinds of stuff. So I'm not 100% sure how all of that connects, but these are the APIs from those parts. So you didn't have to create the GraphQL API from scratch. You can just connect this GraphQL kind of interface to your APIs that you have on the REST APIs on Runtime Manager, like a Mule application. And there are also the response logs. So all of the logs of everything that you have sent will be here. Now, if I click on Run Operation, I will be able to see um, what kind of queries I can do. And these are not here by default. This is just what I run. So if I click on History, I will see um, other queries that I have run that are in the handsome lab. But it keeps it, 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 it kind of like keeps a history of all of them, which I think is so cool. Because that way you don't have to go back and forth um, copying and pasting from one place to another. They will just be here. That's so cool. So anyway, um, this is one. This is another one. This is, uh, well, this is easier. So let's try to run this. Um, I don't know GraphQL, but it kind of tells me like it's retrieving the orders by this ID and it wants to show, it's a fly, sorry. It wants to show the status and the customer email fields, right? That's what I'm gathering from this. So um, this ID and it gets me these orders, the status is completed and the customer email is this one. You can also explore the schema from here in case you're not sure what you can do. And if you click on these three buttons right here, three, three dot button, <laughs> you can copy and share the query. You can trace the query. You can download the schema. You can view the response logs, view the current credentials or switch the current credentials. For example, oh, you cannot see the other ones, but if I click on view cr current credentials, I will be able to see what is the application name that is calling this GraphQL API, client ID and client secret. I can also switch them. So I can select another application. In this case, I just have one, um, but here you learn how to create it, or you can also create a new application from here, or I already have credentials and you can just put your credentials there. Um, if you click on response logs, you will be able to see what we saw at the beginning, the response logs from here, but this gives you already the ID of the last query that you run, which is this one, which is awesome. That's so neat. And then if I select, what else we did? I didn't download the schema and this looks like this is new, but we did trace the query. So if I, let me do the other one that was more stuff, uh, this one. So run this. And then if I click on trace query and run again, I will be able to see where all this thing went to and how long it took. For example, the orders by ID is the one that took 54 milliseconds. The rest of these took less than one millisecond. And then the shipment one took 63 milliseconds. And you can just like take a look at how everything looks like in the, in the trace query. So that's pretty neat. And that's it. That's all I wanted to show you, but it's super awesome. I think this is a great, great product. And again, I'm not familiar with GraphQL, but this was so easy to do that I kind of understand why everyone wants to use GraphQL now. And I'm sorry for my excitement. I've been drinking Coke um, <laughs> and it kind of gets me like excited, I guess. But oh, all right. This took me more than 10 minutes. I'm sorry about that, but I really wanted to go through everything that I showed you. And I'm going to put the link to this hands-on lab if you want to check it out. I did all of this in the trial account. So you're also able to do this in the trial account. And again, if there's some stuff that are not exactly as they are in the lab, as how they are in any point platform, but I will put the link to the live stream that I did today. So you can go to the live stream and check if you are... I'm stuck somewhere, you can check what I did to fix it. And that is it. That is it for this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know if you like Datagraph or not. Let me know if it's different from other kinds of products uh, from GraphQL. 
and follow me on my socials at Devalex Martinez and let me know in a comment below or send me something in like Twitter or Instagram and let me know what other kind of content you would like me to do for Codetober. We still have two weeks to go. So thank you so much for coming and I will see you in the next video. Bye.